Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe the properties of transition elements compared with the elements in group 1. You should then be able to describe the reactivity of the transition elements. So far on this topic, we've been looking at the periodic table. Remember that we find metals on the left side of the periodic table, and non-metals on the right. The transition elements are found in the central part of the periodic table, and all of the transition elements are metals. We're going to start by recapping the metals that we've already looked at. These are the metals in group 1, which we call the alkali metals. The alkali metals have several key features. Firstly, the alkali metals are soft. This means that we can cut the alkali metals with a scalpel, and we saw that in the video on the alkali metals. Secondly, the alkali metals have relatively low melting points. In other words, the alkali metals melt at relatively low temperatures. And lastly, the alkali metals have a low density. This means that they have a relatively low mass for their volume. And in fact, lithium, sodium and potassium are less dense than water. If we look at their reactions, we can see that the alkali metals are highly reactive. For example, the alkali metals all react very rapidly with oxygen, chlorine and water. And we saw those reactions in the video on the alkali metals. And finally, when the alkali metals react, they all form ions with a one positive charge. So in this video, we're going to look at the transition elements and compare them with the alkali metals in group 1. I'm showing you here an example of a transition element. This is iron. So let's look at the properties of the transition elements. Unlike the alkali metals, the transition elements are hard and strong metals. Transition elements all have high melting points, so they require a high temperature to melt. The exception to this is mercury, which is a liquid at room temperature. Transition elements also have a high density. In other words, they have a large mass for their volume. Now, if we look at the reactivity of the transition elements, we can see that they're much less reactive than group 1 metals. For example, transition elements react slowly with oxygen, chlorine and water. This low reactivity makes transition elements very useful. For example, copper is used to make pipes to carry water. Now, just like the alkali metals, when transition elements react, they lose electrons to form ions with a positive charge. However, unlike the alkali metals, transition elements can form ions with different charges. For example, when iron reacts, it can form a 2 positive or a 3 positive ion. And when nickel reacts, it can form a 2 positive or a 4 positive ion. Another property of transition elements is that they form coloured compounds, and I'm showing you some examples here. Iron oxide has a reddish colour, whereas manganese chloride is pink. Chromium chloride is purple, and copper sulphate is blue. Now the final property of transition elements is that they can be useful as catalysts. Catalysts are often used in chemistry to increase the rate of chemical reactions, and in later videos we'll see examples of the transition elements being used as catalysts. You'll find plenty of questions on this topic in my Vision workbook, which you can get by clicking on the link above.